Welcome to the Inclusion of Special Populations Training 703 KR5-070. This is Module 3, Section Specifics, and this module is the third of eight that make up this training series. This module focuses on Section Specifics. And so Module 3 of the Inclusions of Special Population Training takes a more in-depth look at each section presented in the regulation. Now there are six sections within the Inclusion of Special Populations regulation. We will go into a brief summary of each, but for specifics on any given section it is highly advisable you consult the regulation for an in-depth review of each. There are six sections to the regulation in each concern a specific topic. They are 1. Students with Individual Education Programs or IEPs. 2. Students as English Learners or Program Service Plans. 3. Students with 504 Plans or Temporary Medical Conditions. 4. Students in Alternative Programs and State Agency Children. 5. Students receiving instruction in home hospital settings. And 6. Students in the Kentucky Alternate Assessment. So moving along, in Section 1 of the Inclusion of Special Populations Regulation, it focuses on students who receive accommodations by way of an IEP. Now this information can be found on pages 8 through 13 of the regulation document. One of the focal points in this section is the importance of student involvement in the selection and use of accommodations. Now students have the opportunity at an appropriate time in their educational career to have input in their day-to-day -day education services and this should include planning for accommodations. Students should always be provided their accommodations as determined by an IEP or ARC and that is not negotiable. It is never a decision a test administrator is permitted to make whether a student does or does not receive their accommodations. However, students may use or may refuse use of an accommodation at any time. Then this goes for part of or the entire assessment. Now once the student refuses an accommodation, the test administrator may only resume the use of that accommodation during that day of testing at the request of the student. Now the goal is to reduce or fade the use of accommodations over time through improved instructional strategies and specifically designed instruction specific to that individual student. Progress towards independence is the overall goal for the student as they complete educational requirements in the public school setting and move to life after high school. Now everyone involved with testing is required to complete the administration code training. This particular training, 703KR5-070, Inclusion of Special Populations, is designed with those providing accommodations in mind. Many districts, however, find it best practice to provide the accommodation or the administration code and inclusion of special populations training together. That way, all testing staff are trained and available for all areas of testing. Now, districts decide who can assist with accommodations during testing time. Any person not working in a certified position who is providing accommodations for a special population shall read and sign a non-disclosure agreement provided by the department. Now section 2 of the inclusion of special populations regulation focuses on students who are identified as English learners or ELs. Now this information can be found on pages 13 through 19 of the regulation document. Students who enter the school and have English as a second language will be administered the home language survey as part of the first part of the screening process. If a student is determined to be an EL student, a district or school committee must convene to design a program service plan or PSP. A PSP is the plan that describes the necessary interventions and instructional activities to be deployed for the benefit of the student. Now students who enter school who have English as a second language will be administered the English language proficiency assessment. Often when you discuss EL students and state assessments, the topic of a first year exemption is often talked about. Now this is true for first year EL students new to the country. The regulation defines the first year as 240 cumulative days or 12 cumulative months. Students will not be expected to participate in reading. However, a minimum to count for participation is four multiple choice or one extended response in any part of the mathematics and science at the appropriate grade level. Now again, this is just for the participation with no accountability at year one. EL students will test with full accountability and participation beginning with year two and beyond. Now section three of the inclusion of special populations regulation focuses on students who receive accommodations by way of a 504. Another topic uh, focused in on this section is a medical emergency. Now this information can be found on pages 22 through 28 of the regulation document. Anyone who qualifies with a 504 must have a current plan. The 504 plan focuses more on the use of an accommodation due to the health impairments instead of the accommodations related to uh, learning disabilities. 
The other part of this section focuses on medical emergencies. A student who, for instance, has a broken dominant arm can receive an accommodation of a scribe under this section. Another example might be a student dependent on reading glasses. If those glasses are not available and another pair cannot be provided at or by the time of testing, a reader may be acceptable under these conditions. Now, appropriate documentation must be kept on file at the school or district level and it is not required to be submitted to KDE. Section 4 of the Inclusion of Special Populations Regulation focuses on students who receive services through an alternative program. Now, this section also talks about the requirements of state agency children. This information can be found on pages 23 through 24 of the regulation document. As we noted at the beginning of this training, the expectation is that all students enrolled in the Kentucky Public School are expected to test unless they apply for and receive a medical non-participation. This also applies to students who are in an alternative program or setting. This does not always mean an alternative school for behavior situations, which those would also apply here. Alternative programs are considered non-A1 or non-accountable programs. A student is placed at that location to receive a service not afforded to them at their school or district of accountability. The school or district of accountability is where they would be enrolled if they were not in need of that service. Kentucky School for the Deaf and Kentucky School for the Blind are programs that provide services to students who would not be able to receive those same services at their school of accountability. State agency children or students who have been ordered or placed by the courts are also expected to complete all state assessments unless an approved non-participation would apply. Section 5 of the Inclusion of Special Populations Regulation focuses on students who receive services in a homebound or hospital setting. This information can be found on page 24 of the regulation document. Now, homebound students or students placed in a hospital setting are also expected to participate in the state assessments unless a medical circumstance prevents them from doing so. Many students who receive services in a home hospital setting may be considered medically fragile and approved for a non-participation. Now, students who test in the home hospital environments must follow the same testing guidelines as applied to both students and test administrators. Test administrators who administer tests off-site or not at the School of Accountability must follow the requirements set forth in both the Administration Code and the Inclusion of Special Populations Regulation. Read the specific test instructions for accommodations on those tests. Finally, Section 6 of the Inclusion of Special Populations Regulation focuses on students who participate in the Kentucky Alternate Assessment. Now, this information can be found on pages 24 through 29 of the regulation document. Students who qualify for the Kentucky Alternate Assessment are not able to access the general curriculum in the same manner as their peers, even with access to the majority of all available accommodations. Now, this does not mean alternate assessment students are not allowed to have certain accommodations or their accommodations are different. It, is, it just means that the way the content or curriculum is provided to them may be different than students completing the general assessment. Now, students participating in the Kentucky Alternate Assessment are expected to follow the same guidelines for use of accommodations. However, there are a couple instances that are shared in this training that would not be appropriate for students taking the regular assessment. So students are permitted to have a reader on both the regular and alternate assessments. However, the ability to reread is where the difference would apply. On the regular assessment, a student must request a reread. If a test administrator for the alternate assessment found the student to be unengaged or distracted, they could reread to the student based on their observation. Another example can be found on slides 31 and 32 talking about manipulatives. In order to participate in the Kentucky alternate assessment, the ARC or IEP team must place the student based on the participation guidelines established by the Kentucky Department of Education. A student may not qualify unless the ARC or IEP can answer yes to all parts of the Kentucky alternate assessment participation guidelines. If a no is determined at any time, then the student would not qualify for participation. A direct link to those participation guidelines can be found in the notes sections of this slide. And now moving along to our check for understanding. So I will read the question, do a brief pause, and then give the answer. So the first question, once a student reaches an age where they understand their plan and its development, it is important for them to participate because A, the student will not care, B, the student should understand, have, have a say in their plan. C, by law, students must participate. Or D, the plan will expire.
The answer to this one is B. A student should understand and have a say in their plan. Number two, EL students only receive a first year one-time exemption. The second year and beyond requires full participation. Is this true or false? The answer to this question is true. Number three, forms for medical emergencies should always A, be sent to KDE, B, be sent home with the student, C, remain in the district, or D, be sent to the medical professional diagnosing the emergency. The answer to this one is C, they must remain in the district. Number four, state agency children and students in a hospital setting are expected to take the state assessment unless an approved non-participation has been granted. Is this true or false? The answer to this question is true. All children in a public high school or public school in the state of Kentucky are required to take the state assessment unless they have a medical non-participation which has been granted by the Department of Education. Number five, to qualify for the Kentucky Alternate Assessment, which parts of the participation guidelines must be answered with a yes? Is it A, all, B, half, C, only questions one and two, or D, A, B, and C are correct? The answer to this question is A, or all. This concludes module number three on section specifics. Um, you want to continue on in the module series. The next one is module four, the accommodations environment. As always, if you have any questions about this training or any other training we do, please contact us at KDE DAC information at DAC info at education.ky.gov or 502-564-4394. Thanks.